Champions of Psychology is meant as education and entertainment. It is not a substitute for medical advice or professional counseling. Discussion of mental health topics will be primarily rooted in research and the personal experiences and self-disclosures of the hosts. While we can provide generalized education and possible mental health resources, we cannot offer any recommendations, advice, or opinions for any specific persons, cases, or situations. We provide these resources and links at our sole discretion, but have not necessarily vetted or reviewed any resource. We assume no liability for the use of the information or resources on these sites, and we encourage you to use your own best judgment. Hello, and welcome to Champions of Psychology, a show with the goal of only talking about mental health and gaming presented by Codename Entertainment and TakeThis.org. Every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here on Twitch.tv, saw CNE Games, Mitra Jordan, and Rafael Bocamazzo, a.k.a. Dr. B, talk about mental health and how gaming affects us. Uh, if you're here with us live in the chat, you leave a question that I, Trevor Bettis, will ask them later in the show. Our topic today is listening to your own advice. Uh, but before we do that, uh, why don't we listen to who these two folks are for the people in chat who may not know? I'm Mitra Jordan, and I'm a registered clinical counselor in Victoria, British Columbia. I work with individuals, uh, couples, uh, youth, and I love games. And I think we all have a hard time listening to our own advice. And I'm going to pass it off to Mr. Long Italian Name Reasons. Uh, excuse me, that's Dr. Long Italian Name Reasons. I could have sworn Mr. she said Dr. Mr. Long Dr. Italian Dr. Long Italian Name Reasons. Uh, I mean, if we want to get technical, it's the Reverend Mr. Doctor. Oh my gosh. I don't know who's revering this guy, but he is pretty fancy and, and special. And for like so. three minutes, I was like a Scottish king or something. I don't know. The internet told me. <laughs> I, I also was Cleopatra's goddaughter, <laughs> miraculously. Today on it Champions was, of Psychology, delusions of grandeur. Did and no one told me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Obo Lauren, I will be your warlock patron. It's going to be a <laughs> wacky campaign. Uh, I really hope someone out there appreciated my defending your life reference. But anywho, Dr. B, who yeah, no, are hi, you? Hi, I'm Dr. B for long Italian name reasons, because uh, nobody wants to deal with my last name. Uh, I'm a clinical psychologist in Washington State. I'm the clinical director at Take This, the oldest mental health nonprofit in the game industry. Um, and but by all means, go check out TakeThis.org for all the wonderful resources that we have for free. And... Uh, yeah, I'm also an expert on the applied use of uh, tabletop RPGs in gaming, excuse me, in uh, clinical and learning settings. And I am also here to talk about why we don't take our own advice. And for all of you that say today, I'm feeling attacked, know that I'm putting my own head on the chopping block here. Dr. B literally suggested this in our season meeting <laughs> and even him, the entire meeting went oof. <laughs> what? <laughs> like in <unison>. what? <laughs> no. Um. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're yeah we're we're talking about this because uh we're I like a lot. It seems like most people I know. I'm not definitely throwing myself under the bus here. Uh, we are hypocrites. What? Uh, we are absolute harsh hypocrites. words. Harsh words. And uh, <laughs> harsh it, words have never been truer. <laughs> <laughs> we do. It is so easy to dole out advice and objective feedback to other people but we somehow struggle to do it for ourselves and i'm definitely a part of this and why don't we why don't we do that because you know change is hard so um let, let's uh, i want to talk i want to send it over to mitra now because why is this a problem mitra because i'm already feeling self-conscious <laughs> Okay, it's a problem because change is hard and change requires sacrificing something. So, you know, if I say to myself, as I have before, and have I listened? I have not. Mitra, <laughs> I have said, <laughs> Mitra, you could be getting more exercise, I have said to me. And my, my partner, who also now has an Apple Watch, will gloatingly point out, 
how much exercise he's getting. And also, my God, you're getting so little, which, you know, it is now face to face, face to face, nose to nose, eye to eye about how I am not doing this. And when I am with clients, one of the things I will share is that it really helps you stay regulated if you're getting um, <clears throat> some activity in and let's consider what's going to work for you because, you know, movement is actually very regulating, et cetera, et cetera. And then I hear myself and I go, yeah. And then I'm like, well, it's what, still Zelda? really important to share. <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah, but when was the last time you did more than a walk at a fast clip? But I have champions. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're on mobile. You can do that while you walk. <laughs> oh, Christ. Point, point You're giving me fewer shit. excuses. <laughs> well, it's, so, yeah, we hear ourselves, and that's the hard part. Yeah. We hear ourselves, and we stop being able to trust ourselves. When we say these things to other people, even when we tell ourselves, you should, you ought to, you must, really, it would be a good idea if, etc. No, hundred percent. But it's, so it's a strange, it, it's a really weird thing. And I want to give credit where it's due. Um, my partner, uh, Jessica McCabe, how to ADHD told me this a long time ago and it just stuck. She says a lot of fantastic things, but this one just stuck. And that is the house looks different when you live inside of it. Mm, oh yeah. It's, it, mm-hmm. it is so much harder to see what other people see when you are at the center of it yeah Yeah. and that's kind of a double-edged sword because on one hand you can be an an objective observer observer for someone else you know you can see what the exterior of their metaphorical house looks like but it's so much different when you live in the interior yeah I, I, you see I, all the details. I, I've literally experienced this extremely recently. Um, the the podcast I do with uh, B. Dave Walters and Aaron M. Evans, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we we miss weeks sometimes because we're very much just like, hey, this is our show and we do love doing this, but also there's times that you know we need a, a week off or maybe things just aren't working out like that. So, but we'll post about mm-hmm. it and whatnot. Uh, but I was having a really bad mental health week and. Um, I was going to push through it and everything like that. And, and uh, Tara, my wife, Tara goes, Hey, what's that thing you always tell Aaron and B Dave when they're having a bad week. And I went that it's our show. And if we need to take the time, we should do so. And she, uh, she says, yeah, maybe you should listen to yourself. And I literally sent that to them and they went, she is a hundred percent right. We're not recording this week. (sighs) And it was one of those just like, damn it, Pastor Trevor. (laughs) (laughs) well and i don't know i don't know how much the two of you deal with this um this is certainly you know it's easier when i'm talking to my clients and i suspect mitra will say the same thing but you know the same things we i i might tell my clients if i turn that around i i don't even think about it because there's so many internalized messages that i have about the way like the way i should be in the world Mm-hmm. It's it, it it gets my own emotions involved, my own insecurities, and so forth. It is just so much easier to be objective when you're not involved. <laughs> I know that's like yeah. earth shattering wisdom here, but it's worth the reminder that it's easier when it's easier. Yeah, it's an easier yeah. said than done situation. Yeah, you can see other people's experiences and and situations from the outside. You have a broader perspective of their situation as well. And it's just when you're in the midst of it, there's so much coming at us at all times. It's actually harder to see that broader picture of what we really could put some energy towards and what we could actually let go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But th- there's also the other aspect of it. So, M- Mitra, Trevor, you know, I I can be just a wisdom dispensing machine when it comes to your <laughs> life. And I am. Y'all don't know this, but like I behind the scenes, these two like text me on the regular and they're like, yo, Dr. B, what do I do? Because they totally call me Dr. B in private. Um, like, Dr. B, what do I do? And I'm like, yeah, I know what you do. And here's what you do. And da, da, da. And you know why I'm such a genius when it comes to other people's lives? Because I don't have to be the one changing. Yes. Well, 
Um, <clears throat> All of that, that was totally true. Absolutely, hundred percent. It's never that situation has yes. never happened while we play Destiny at all. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm not like Trevor. Yeah. It's midnight. I got to go to bed, yeah. man. Yeah. No, I'm generally texting Doctor B at around two in the morning or tweeting, and he, you know, he's so responsive. He's so right there. <laughs> Don't Probably point me out. That hour. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I don't have to be if if I'm the one talking to somebody else, all I have to do is be like, boom, advice, and I can walk away. Yeah. If it's me, I actually have to put in the effort. And yeah. That sucks. Mm -hmm. It it really does suck. It really does. And and not only do you have to put in the effort and um traverse that learning curve to put change in place, but you usually also have to let go of certain things. You know, um, if, for instance, all our friends go to the bar and we're like, okay, dry for a month or yeah. I need to stop drinking for what, whatever it is. It's like, okay, now what? Mm. You know, mm -hmm. so so if if that's where we congregate or that's where we go off to work or if okay, we all develop habits that work for us and also coping tools that work for us mm -hmm. and what's if we have a go-to that we have to change i had a terrible habit of staying up far too late because the house was really quiet i could focus on things um nobody was asking me any questions because they were asleep it was super convenient. <laughs> but then but then the next morning you know it got so i was consistently sleep deprived for a little while and you know i could i was starting to really feel the effect um and so i had to stop but then i had to figure out when was I going to get that quiet time? Because you can't just cut something out and go, yeah, I'll be fine without it. Because there's a reason we get into the habits we, we do. And so if we want to change them, we have to find something that's going to fill that need um, or be an adequate replacement for mm -hmm. us. And that's the hard part. Well, I mean, that's that's one of the hard parts. The, and the other part is, uh, well, another hard part to this is uh, was brought up in the chat. Um, mm. People have different hurdles, obstacles, oh, yeah. limitations, and so forth. Like, Absolutely. You know, we've we've talked about, uh, you know, ad nauseum systemic barriers that certain people face just on the basis of their identity. Yeah. But there's also, you know, there's also individual circumstances that, other that you may be facing that other people don't necessarily face like um somebody in chat brought up arthritis yeah well yeah, yeah that makes a big exactly. difference in going out to move yeah. like i can tell other people yeah. exercise is amazing exercise is good for you and you know what i'd love to do it but guess what uh yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> i yeah I, I have multiple injuries in the last six months that are really serious, mm -hmm. you know, it, injuries, to, uh, you know, little content warning for like medical situation. I'll, I'll be as brief as I can, but I fell down the stairs mm -hmm. six weeks later. I got in a set. I was at the front of a seven car pileup. Um, that puts legit barriers in the yeah. way of me taking the advice I might give somebody else. Oh yeah. And so what, Absolutely. yeah, our challenges are different. Yeah. 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 And then if there are certain things that we say can do, say someone's in a place where walking's really hard, but they could go to the pool or something. Is there a pool nearby? Yeah. Is it one you can access? Yeah. You know, are there facilities membership. that are reasonably priced that are doable? Are there ways to drop in and try things out? Um, mm -hmm. Is there healthy food that you can buy? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, if there, because there are barriers, huge barriers to he eating healthy, and um, and food has gone up in price. So the last grocery bill I paid, I was like, "Whoa, really?" And it wasn't any different than than the previous ones that typically I would I would get. But it's just like all of that, you can kind of see that those are really major barriers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and it's also a really difficult. Sometimes we forget to take our life context in terms of I'm going through a learning curve because I just started a new job or I have a new baby or something or uh, I just I just went back to school. You know, yeah. I have a bunch of other learning processes that are happening. That is not the time unless you really have to to change another habit. Uh -huh. pattern. Uh, you know, it's very Me difficult in grad school. <laughs> yeah. 
it, oh, it is absolutely. it is wild that like <laughs> it's almost just kind of a of a human thing where it's just like oh yeah i'll add on this uh entire chunk of time and nothing will change at all no it'll just be completely the same as always really yeah no weird. totally yep Totally. Going to the gym for five hours a week minimum, mm -hmm. uh, plus the transport, plus the travel time, plus the stretching time, plus the cool down time, plus the additional shower time, because you're going to need the additional shower time if you're going to the gym five hours a week. Um, you know, all of that put in together definitely doesn't make a big impact on your life. Yeah. Yeah. Not to mention you may have never been to the gym before yeah. or maybe it's been a long time so then you're going to need some instruction and some help because you know and then, so in then my you experience got social stuff <sighs> on top of it or you get injured yeah. okay the or, rock yeah. bead. dr b feels attack tally just went up <laughs> <laughs> or or you get injured going to the gym because you're just not used to doing things oh my god <laughs> okay listen you know? just just because i last hurt myself shifting weight slightly doesn't mean it's going to be a problem oh it's totally a problem <laughs> okay so uh, i i, I want to i want to shift gears here for a moment because normally yeah. we save this for later in the show but we want to have more time to talk yeah. about this you know we, the, the, we've given examples of what this is and i do kind of feel like especially folks in the, uh, who are like i am attacked right now know what we're talking about uh-huh what, what do we do what do we do about quit attacking this? me no, I won't. Uh <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry. That's that's not that we have this show. This the, is a little thing we do where this you know is why it we're sort of friends. predicates. <laughs> yes, exactly. Would you really want us to stop behaving like we always do? No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no. So in general, uh, what do we do? I mean, working with if you can if you have access to it, if you can afford it, working with professional support about, you know, making any sort of life changes. Because then you get that's that's always my first recommendation to folks um, is, is that get support, especially from someone who knows how to help in whatever direction you're trying to go. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because, first of all, they'll usually slow you down, which <laughs> is a good thing. Right. Because, you know, when generally when we decide, OK, I'm committed to change now, I want change now. And it doesn't work that way. So we're often impatient and we kind of either want to buy all the stuff if we can afford things uh, because, you know, then I'm committed. I'll get the yoga gear, you know? No, no, no. You're, you're okay to just wear your sweatpants or something. It's fine. And, and so they slow you down and get you to do small and incremental changes usually. And they also help you really get a handle on your own situation and how many changes and what time of day can you you know, devote to change. Um, how much energy and time do you have available? And they make it realistic, small, realistic, attainable. Yes. Well, and I mean, you're talking, you're talking about you're, you're actually kind of reflecting one of the conversations that's happening in chat right now. And that's just biting off way more than you can chew yep. or confusion yeah. about what to do. You know, may what I should be doing is X, Y, or Z, but that's actually not the helpful steps so mm -hmm. getting the support of somebody who know who knows what's up in the direction that you're trying to go um often that means working with a professional um is tremendously helpful because uh you know mitra mitra mentioned needing to slow down but for some of us it's helping us go forward and speed up like yeah. for those of us with a lot of anxiety there mm -hmm. we can just stay put sometimes mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, I mean, well, it's anxiety is a weird thing because, uh, you know, for some people uh, coping with their anxiety means doing all the things right now yeah. so I can get it over with. And yeah. we've checked that off the list for the for some of the rest of us. It's like, and I'm right here. Oh, that's right. The solution's right there. No, I'm good. I'm I'm right here. I'll just stay right here I'm, where it's, that, it's comfortable. The comfort yeah. zone is under is underrated. All right. It's comfortable <laughs> right. here. Yeah. I've decided I don't want to do it after all today, <laughs> but tomorrow could be good. Good. Yeah. No, tomorrow's, uh, a, tomorrow's a new day and a new possibility to stay in my comfort zone. I got things tomorrow. Day after. Mm -hmm. Day after for sure. Yeah. No, yes. got to wash my hair. <laughs> yeah, that takes gotta, hours. That's a yeah. thing I now know. Yeah. It takes a while. It's true. Otherwise, I look like a giant Q-tip. <laughs> okay. <Just> like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. 
we, that's a tangent, a tangent. It's a good one, you know, because that could also hold you up. Yeah, yeah, giant Q-tip, got to do something about it. We can find a lot of reasons not to not to change. Um, and one of the things that, that, that helped me at one point was considering, okay, I could go to grad school. Um, spoiler alert, I did, we're here. But I remember thinking, I could go to grad school. Oh, but that seems like a lot of work. But this is the thing I really want. And you know what? And oh, and it, it, but it could take a long time, like five years, maybe more. And then it was the, you know what? You're going to be five years older anyway. <laughs> what sort of five years older did you want to be? Did you want to be five years older with this skill set or that better health outcome or whatever? Right. Yeah. If mm-hmm. we can just think of it in terms of what does present us want to create for future us or what does present us very reluctantly decided and in a sulky fashion, decided future <laughs> us might like, mm, I'm going to eat this thing which is better, I suppose, and it tastes crappy. Why can't I have some wine with that? Oh, I guess it'll feel good later sometime, you know. But it's so, we have to make it really tangible for ourselves because later isn't really helpful. So. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I, I often think of uh, Commander Data in Star Trek The Next Generation as like the model for autistic adulthood. There's so many lines that he says that I totally resonate with. And there was, there was that one episode where Q got turned into a human and he asks about what Data eats. And Data is like, you know, it's a silicone lubricant or whatever. Is it good? Uh, it might be better to say it's good for me. And if that ain't just the metaphor for absolutely growth as a human being, I'm just like, yeah, I'm gr- are you happy about it? No, but I will be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, Mitra also Mitra also brings up something, and that's like the cost of change. Mm-hmm. And this is, you know, for a lot of folks, this is a reason that we don't listen to our own advice. And, um, you know, a strategy that I, I commonly use with clients uh, is called a decision matrix. And uh, what, what you do um, it, it, to do a decision matrix is it's a two by two square grid where it's you know, on the top, you put pros and cons and on the side, you put changing, staying the same. And what's fascinating is when I do this with clients and I get to, okay, so what are the, pro- what are the pros of staying the same and not changing? Everybody gives me this hallmark kind of motivational speech answer of, well, there's no, ch- there's no advantages to saying the same. And I'm like, BS. If there weren't, you wouldn't do it. So let's yep. talk about it honestly. And it's the same thing when I talk about what are the costs of changing? And they're like, well, change is good. There's no real cost. I'm like, BS. <laughs> there is a hundred percent cost to changing. Otherwise you would have done it. Yeah. And so let's talk about it honestly and have a good conversation about what are our actual motivators? What are, what do we want down the line? What do we, what do we want in terms of long-term goals? And are those long-term goals actually worth it enough to us to override the short-term relief? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's actually a really a, a big one mm-hmm. because if we haven't determined that we're willing to pay the cost or if we don't get to flesh things out enough to actually see the cost, mm-hmm. uh, it can make it really difficult. I mean, for, for, <laughs> for me, one of the costs I hadn't thought about was one of my kids turning to me and I was almost done grad school. I was about to hand in um, my final thesis and I had done my, I was about to do my comprehensive exam and my kids said, oh. but you don't like movies. <laughs> what? I love movies. And then I realized that for three years, I hadn't gone to any movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, three years. I hadn't traveled. I'd barely read a novel. There were no movies. Don't know Every what any minute. of this is like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, there, there are costs. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hunter. I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's always things that we give, and this is, a, this is a question I straight up ask a lot of my clients. Okay, so you, you know, you want to go in this direction. What price are you willing to pay? And we end up just having a very honest conversation around what are you willing to give up? What are the actual available resources you have right now? What are the limitations that are there? You know, do we need to adjust what the goals are? Do we need to adjust expected time frames because change is not linear? Mm-hmm. 
you know, there's yeah. a there's a lot of things to be considered in quote unquote simple goals. Yeah. And making one small change at a time works much better than trying to make all of them. Um, at one point, I wanted to eat a bit healthier. Um, and so one of the first things I did was uh, change how much sugar I put in my tea. Oh, yeah. And it's a it's a tiny change. But I went from uh, a, ta- a teaspoon and a half to just a teaspoon. Mm-hmm. Then I went down to a half teaspoon. Don't you use but- the metric system up there? Not for like. Come on, it's tea. What do you want it's, me to do? It's a literal like, teaspoon. Yeah, no, I'm going to use literal. a jeweler's loop and one of those super tiny scales, and it's going to be like a drug thing. <laughs> <laughs> don't oh, talk about grams. my coffee process. <laughs> so, so the the funny thing is, like, I I did a similar thing uh, when I was like eighteen, I think. Like, I I decided I was just like I'm having too much sugar, and um, I I stopped putting sugar in my coffee altogether, and then I was just like, oh, I actually think I like this better. <laughs> <laughs> And then there was like high a t- octane. Then there was like a ten year stretch where I didn't even put creamer in. I was just like, I I just drink black coffee, and I constantly got asked who hurt me. Uh- <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> that conversation. <laughs> uh, we're we're I I, I want to do the our quick uh, disclaimer right here, uh, and then we'll be back to talk more about this uh, and, and and more of what we do and how to do it. So uh, let me click the right buttons. Let's stick around. We'll be right back. All right, bye. Champions of Psychology is meant as education and entertainment. It is not a substitute for medical advice or professional counseling. Discussion of mental health topics will be primarily rooted in research and the personal experiences and self-disclosures of the hosts. While we can provide generalized education and possible mental health resources, we cannot offer any recommendations, advice, or opinions for any specific persons, cases, or situations. We provide these resources and links at our sole discretion, but have not necessarily vetted or reviewed any resource. We assume no liability for the use of the information or resources on these sites, and we encourage you to use your own best judgment. Okay, coming back. Um, I don't know if we ever ended up doing an episode about this. I know it's been on the. Episode I think we did. List. Did we do it? Well, we're, let, yeah. I, did we? A, let's talk a little I bit think about we arrival did. fallacy. Yeah, yeah, arrival fallacy. It's just this con- arrival fallacy is this concept that uh, things will be great when I achieve X, Y, and you know this one thing. You know, when I all my problems will be solved when I get a new job. And for some people, that might be true. Uh, you know, if, if there are certain circumstances around it, but very frequently, um, very frequently, uh, it brings a new set of challenges, every new circumstance. And so our arrival fallacy is one that we end, I end up talking with folks a lot in therapy. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it, it's just something to look out for in setting in, listening to our own advice and idealizing the future and so forth. It's just, Mm -hmm. it's a tricky thing to navigate, which is part Mm -hmm. of the reason I recommend if you're going to, if you're having trouble listening to your own advice or making a change, talk to a mental health professional. Absolutely. Yeah. And ask yourself what it is because arrival fallacy is all about sort of this perfect future and Mm -hmm. kind of like, for example, I'll be happy when I lose 70 pounds. So Mm -hmm. Something like that, right? Where it's this idea that my whole world will change if I've met this one goal. And that's great. And there may be some really good health reasons or career reasons or other reasons why we may want to do the changes that we do. You Mm -hmm. know, for example, I might work hard on a certain course to up my career value, right? And say, um, but we have to look at okay, what else am I doing along the way to sustain myself? And if I'm so focused on this goal and then I get to it and then I look around and it's like, maybe nothing's different enough or maybe it's not the big thing that we thought it was. Um, And it can leave a lot of, it can leave people feeling a little empty and a little afraid. Um, So just really thinking about what you expect 
your goal to help you achieve. Mm -hmm. And that can also determine the pace at which you do it. Because a realistic pace that is sustainable for you also allows you to have a life that you want to live. And sometimes the pace is set by something outside you, like grad school for me, where, you or know, physical limitations. Up, yeah. Sometimes there are things we can't control, but we need to consider the things that we can. And if we're continuing to make a decision to do things a certain way, we need to continue to buy into that decision for ourselves, right? So somebody brought up the question about spoons and um, yeah, limited resources. So where am I putting my resources? And I have to, it'll be helpful to keep choosing that this is how I want to use them. And I accept then that there's things I can't do or won't be doing because I only have so much energy. So, and that's really important to just think about ahead of time so that you're aware you're continually choosing to commit to the to your goal instead of feeling resentment or sadness or grief about the cost of your goal. And just to throw that throw that in there, there's also just sometimes a really realistic conversation about like how much how much extra energy, how much extra time and resources do I truly truly have? Because there are plenty of us in life who um who just merely survival yeah takes up so much of our time and that's i mean that's part of the conversation as well that it, listening to our own advice sometimes it 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 takes more than we have and that now i'm now totally talking about i'm god i'm talking about myself at various times in my life um just really having and being honest with myself about what what can I do? Yeah. What are my priorities here? Is, what spare time and resources and money and physical abilities do I have right now to give towards some other lofty goal when I'm just trying to get by? Mm -hmm. and, and so we've talked a lot about goals, but I also want to throw one other thing in here, which is the way we talk to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, often we can get caught up in should and ought and must. And that's unkind, right? Because if a friend came to me and was like, well, I've been trying to do this thing, but it's really hard, you know, I'd be able to say, yeah, but you also, for example, um, have a really demanding job or um, are still grieving the loss of your dad or, you know, you're just kind of, you have, yep. or you bought, you just got this, this kind of new uh, project you're working on with your car or something, whatever it is, you're kind of like, yeah, and you've got this thing. Or I see these other challenges that that I that maybe you're not taking into account why this is harder than you thought. Because we're not always kind to ourselves. And that's such a big part of this. It's like if something isn't working, we can get very mean about it in terms mm -hmm. of our self talk. And you're just a lazy this or why aren't you doing that? Oh or, God, global month, labels. Yeah. And, and they're so, you know, as opposed to sort of going, okay, if this isn't working, why is that? Mm -hmm. Getting kind and curious with our process. Maybe this isn't the path for me, or maybe I need to consider that, you know, yes, I want to get active, but this sport I thought was going to work, it, I hate every second of it. And I'm not a team sport person or something. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. instead of judging ourselves for it, just kind of reflecting on why, this isn't the path we that works for us. Well, and you're you're talking about a common strategy that uh, a lot of therapists use with their clients, and it's certainly one that I end up using with a lot of my clients. And this is this is the concept of like reframing global labels as behavioral labels. Just to you know to break it down for folks, like there's a big difference between I'm lazy versus I'm having a hard time being motivated right now. Absolutely. The latter is a situational thing we can problem solve. The the first part, that global label, that's a that's labeling ourselves. We, we essentially have to fix our personalities and fix who we are, our identities in order to fix that problem, which is so much harder 
then then like hey i'm having a hard time being motivated with this task yeah what do we do with it um it's so much it's often so much more approachable for my clients um if if we start working with those situational labels and behavioral labels as opposed to you know i'm a you know piece of garbage that that's yeah. that's tough to fix personalities yeah, and it damages our own relationship with with us, right? Because I think the thing we sometimes forget is um, we are in a long term relationship with us, and and like any long term relationship, we don't expect to fix things right away. Wait, I don't. Well, I hope not, because it could be. But I want. It but really I want to fix things challenges. now. Right, and so one step at a time generally works far better. And if it's a relationship with someone else as well, and, and we're expecting them to change, um, they're, they're going to have a, t- a tough time with that as, as well. You Just say strange we... words, Earth Girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, being, being kind to, to yourself, taking your time, recognizing your limited resources, um, and taking them into account, like it's all very well to say, oh, yes, I know I only have so much energy and I know I only have this or that. But then it's like, but I should anyway, right? Because we oh, do that. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 super unhelpful. Well, yeah, those- like, uh, There's those, always tomorrow. <laughs> there, well, those, uh, those unrealistic standards we end up holding are- And th- this comes back to the different circumstances we're, we're in for people because often- God, th- Raise your hand if you sometimes hold different standards for yourself than for other people. Like you can more easily forgive other people's foibles that not your own. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> that, well, I, and it's so weird that we do that. Well, so so what, one one of the things that um that. I, I don't remember who it was that uh, said this to me, but it was like one of those real talk moments uh, on this kind of subject that made me go, oh, huh, dang, uh, which was like essentially the situation was I had given advice to someone um, and w- this is just like this. I wasn't wasn't listening to my own advice and going through the exact same problem. And someone was uh, essentially was like, OK, why aren't you taking that advice for yourself? And I just kept running in circles around trying to like talk around this. And they went, okay, do you think you're better than the person you gave that advice to? And I was like, absolutely not. And they go, okay, then you should probably take that advice too. And I was like, oh, ah. Oh, I took I took <laughs> physical and psychic damage in one oh, hit. Oh God, like, it was yeah, and, and it, it it it's one of those things, and th- that's something that does pop into my head now every time. Like that situation I just gave with the the podcast and my wife saying it, it was just like it's like I I don't I'm not I absolutely do not think I'm better than B Dave or Aaron. So why do I feel that I have to push myself and it's okay for them to take that time off, but it's not for me. That is the lesser known spell Tasha's poignant call. <laughs> oh boy. And what's interesting is that if you get the if you cast Tasha's poignant call poignant call out right, it's double the psychic damage of Tasha's hideous laughter. Ooh. But you get bonuses to wisdom. <laughs> oh my god, I'm writing that. I think that's so good. No, I yeah. genuinely <laughs> think we should try to figure out this like therapy patron. Uh <laughs> Oh, I've, I already, I already helped write that. I thought it was a. Ter- Never mind. We'll talk about later. No, no, we we'll talk about that later. But um, the uh, here's the here. Okay, this is one I've been using a lot lately, or trying to. Um, when I'm not being sassy and deflecting it because of the name, and I think this came from Brendan Mahan over at the ADHD Essentials podcast. Um, he he talked about Coach A and Coach B, and as soon as as soon as I heard this, um, you know my sarcastic defenses went up and I said, well, I'm always coach B and, and they're like, yeah, yeah, shut up and listen. <laughs> um, and I'm like, okay. Uh, but the, the situation was the situation they, they use as an example is you're a goalie in some sports ball game. Okay. Like the puck is coming to you from the three point line and you, uh, you, you miss the, you miss saving it. And coach a you lose the game. Coach A comes over and they start berating you like you're a piece of garbage. Uh, why can't you do it? 
Um, you, you, we lost the game because of you do better next time or else. How are you feeling when coach A talks to you now? Same cir- circumstances. Coach B comes over and coach B just kind of leans down and is like, yeah, that happened. So what are we going to do about it? Mm-hmm. How are we going to, how are we going to build ourselves up? What are we going to do tomorrow and the next day? And maybe even for the next game, because I know you got it in you. Who do you want talking to yourself, Coach A or Coach B? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, I personally, I have been trying hard to tap into Coach B mm-hmm. without being sassy and saying it's always Coach B. Yeah. Um, but they- it's hard because it's a have it's a ha- learn it's. Thought processes are a behavior, are a learned thing like anything else. And so changing that is real hard. Yeah. Yeah. As the old saying goes, you don't have to believe everything you think. So all of those negative thoughts, we can kind of, if we can just kind of let them go, like maybe we'll have them like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And I lost the game. And all that. But it, that's not going to help you move forward. And it's not, it's unkind. So it's yeah. like, okay, sometimes we can be unkind. Off we go. Let it go. Yeah. You know, but, but it is hard to be coach B. Yeah. It's much easier to be coach B for other people. And we come back totally. to that. Like, again, we're quite good at being kind to others. Yeah. Um, especially when we care about them. Yeah. But we have to work at not doing that thing where, where we expect exceptionalism of us to our own detriment, which is what you're talking about, Trevor. It's kind of like, because we have a felt sense, we don't always trust ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes we think we're fooling. Like, really, we can do it. You know, we can do it. We should just push. Yeah, what's what's wrong? It's so, I mean, it, it's amazing how often that, I, I, and again, speaking just for myself here, it's amazing how often that sort of, motivational but really self-deprecating thoughts yeah. mm-hmm. are fueled by emo- my emotional state in the moment and when i'm talking to someone else i'm more objective and i don't have that emotional state necessarily and so it's easier to be kind because i'm not already angry at myself yeah it's also true that we live in a culture that kind of rewards this idea of pushing through um particularly pre-pandemic but um but even so it's there's this idea that you know work hard and you play harder or something <laughs> like that that's ridiculous what a um, what a just absolute bs waspy and you know attitude it's, towards things absolutely it's you know horrible. you can achieve anything if you just work hard enough no no i will mm. never be lebron i don't care how hard i work there are there are so many limitations my age my height my lack of actual coordination um and some of those things w- those things will just not change yeah, yeah I, and we're completely ignoring systemic issues oh yeah that yeah like so ow. yeah y- yesterday we were talking a little bit about celebrities and advantage right uh-huh. and how some of them are like you too could be like me if you just, you know, <laughs> yeah. did these things. And I'm like, yeah, I don't actually have a team of chefs uh, to cook every meal so that I can stay really on track and healthy. And they can fly in all those exotic ingredients that are out of season too. Like, <laughs> thank you for ruining the climate, you putzes. But anyway, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, with the soft filter. And like, I think Martha Stewart has a co- is doing a cover now. And it's like, yeah, oh, Sports fabulous. Illustrated and Swimsuit Edition. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, how much was that airbrushed or changed or whatever? And like, that's that's great, but it's it's actually a real problem in terms of ageism. Yeah. Because it's like, if people are routinely uncomfortable to actually look their age in those circumstances, um, it, it really isn't a benefit to the rest of us. Right. It becomes an un, unachievable goal to look like Martha Stewart at 81. Right. Yeah. Which I don't have all those fancy magazine editors and nor did anyone fly me to Bali. Not the venue. That's where she's gone. I'm a little obsessed with Bali now. Sorry. But <laughs> my point is, <laughs> you know, I don't have anyone to fly me to some beautiful beach somewhere and then dress me up and then aim me just right so that nothing's actually showing. But, you know, I look hot. Also my hair. And who knows whether there's any kind of 
extra bits in there and plus hairstylists are really good you know and and so all of this that i it, it's just not realistic to walk in the world that way well so it seems like a lot of what we're talking about comes down to taking a realistic look at what are our circumstances what are our emotional states um as we talk to ourselves versus what are what is our emotional state as we're talking to others and what are their circumstances and like um you know going back to the celebrity well Kumail Nanjiani when uh non, uh, when he did uh, the movie Eternals and he appeared on like Men's Health magazine and just like freaking cut he was so honest about how not attainable that is for most people to yeah. be in the gym two hours a day, having specialty meals planned and cooked for you all while trying to actually, because this is also part of his job instead of in addition to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not to mention to look that cut. Isn't there a like, then you eat no carbs and you eat no water and you get glossed oh. over with oils. And I don't know, like there's a lot that's done to oh, set yeah. up an image, oh, right? Yeah. A compelling image that oh, has yeah. nothing to do with a person's reality. Yeah. Total, so, like, I mean, uh, uh, Hugh Jackman talks about this after after he plays Wolverine. Um, mm -hmm. The Chris Evans diet in uh, in any Captain America role, same thing with, you know, God. Um, God other Chris. Hemsworth. Thank you. The one with all the brothers. <laughs> It's their their <laughs> diets their diets were so programmed so timed and it does not sound enjoyable. No, absolutely not. No. It's, yeah, the, yeah. So their it's circumstances not. very different. Yeah, and they're doing it for specific goals. Yeah. Remember, there's and also specific paid. deadlines. <laughs> and so they're being well. paid so well. Yeah. You know, with the best medical care around and all the rest but, of it, making sure they do it safely. Physio at their fingertips should they need it. You know, it, it's so, insurance on the sets. Yeah, it's it's always weird for me when like like news outlets were reports like, oh Hugh Hugh Jackman get gets cut for Wolverine. I'm like, no, they they paid him to do that. Like they set all of that's that his up. job. That that wasn't just he was like, oh playing Wolverine should probably do something about this. Like that's not <laughs> Yeah, that does just, not happen. I, I just realized something. Pointing out an actor in peak physical condition playing a role that requires peak physical condition, getting paid to get into peak physical condition, is a lot like pointing out a professional athlete and saying, look at them. They're in such good shape for their job. I'm like, <laughs> yes yes Padre's they are and they spend 14 season. hours a day sometimes doing it and they Pod have no other life at those times right and that's what they're doing and that is not real for you and that is not sustainable for me so you know and nor is it necessarily something we would want to attain yeah like it's great for five minutes and lots of people do things where they'll um, one photo shoot you know, i can have that for the rest yeah, of my life yeah <laughs> yeah exactly one we all want to look good on our life. wedding day or grad or those kinds of right. things but uh, but that's not every day yeah what we need to do is consider how we want to live our every day yeah well and that it, it so yeah i mean it, it comes it comes down to a lot of you know our it at least for me and for a lot of my clients and certainly for a lot of my friends um emo you know what are what is our emotional interference like how do we already feel about the situation do we feel guilt do we feel anger at ourselves do we feel all sorts of stuff is that getting in the way of the way we talk to ourselves with more self you know care and love and compassion than we talk to a friend that we can be more objective about um two it sounds like for at least for for some of us um it's it's a habit and habits are hard that ha you know the way we think is even hard to change let yeah, alone we, taking the steps to create physical change in our environment. Yeah, I think one of the first things we need to work on changing is actually catching the way we think. Mm. And we can't do that unless we know what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So something, journaling, uh, speaking with a friend who pointed out or a mental health professional. Like, this, is where, um, this is where we shine. Right. We're very good at this part. and And just kind of recognizing the difference in tone when we speak to a loved one, a dear one, a friend, a child, someone we're vulnerable with, but we care deeply about, 
the difference when we speak to them about their challenges Mm -hmm. versus how we're speaking to ourselves. And ask yourself, is that okay? Is that what you want? Don't you deserve better from you? Because honestly, if you want to receive from other people and give to other people, you need to also be able to receive and give to yourself. And part of, of learning to be kinder in the world is speaking to yourself with kindness and hearing that kindness and going from there. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, we're getting towards the end of our time here, uh, and I don't think there's any better way that we could, uh, wrap up with, uh, than that. Uh, I do want to, uh, uh, start things off by saying, uh, don't, don't go anywhere yet. We still got things to talk about. Hold up. Um, we have, uh, a charity, uh, drive going on right now. Uh, the link totally. was actually just put into the chat, uh, Barasa Ma Jordan. Uh, you can get a t-shirt or a sweater with the Champion Psychology logo and a little, uh, uh, catchphrase underneath in Latin, uh, and, uh, the pro of that will go to take this so you so one of the one of the people that help make this show uh you can go and actually just financially support uh if you have the means to and get a really cool shirt or sweatshirt out of it um and we're we're very excited about it so uh, i'm trying like, to look very aspca right now just <laughs> in the i will of... remember <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, hopefully I don't get taken down off Twitch for that one. Uh, but yeah. It was uh, one line. It was one line. Uh, the, the charity is only going to be going on for one week. So, uh, you have, uh, until next Monday to, uh, click the link, uh, and go, uh, grab one of those shirts or sweatshirts. I'm uh, getting a hoodie. Oh, I am yeah, totally I'm getting a hoodie. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm in hoodie. Seattle where it's not hoodie. 90 degrees hoodie. most hoodie. of the year. Hoodie. But I might go back and get a t-shirt too. Now that I think about it, <laughs> I might. So, uh, so yeah, uh, please uh, go do that. The, the link is in the chat. Uh, the link is on uh, the Codename Entertainment website. It's on Twitter. Uh, it, you can tweet at one of us, and we'll send it to you. Uh, just, you know, if, if you have the means to, please uh, help out, because uh, they're an awesome group. Um, the, uh, I am going to put here uh, as a note. Uh, there was one question uh, in the chat. Uh, we didn't get to it. I'm not going to call you by name, but you know who you are. Uh, we can't actually uh, give advice like that on this show. It is not uh, uh, something that we are able to do. Uh, but if you check out takethis.org, there might be uh, some links there that are able to point you in the right direction. Lots of referral, lots of resources at our resource page, takethis.org forward slash resource. There we go. Mm-hmm. Our resources. Um... But, Briefly, uh, Reaver, the size measurements are also on the link so that you can kind of look at the flat size and measure it to a shirt or hoodie of your that you have that you like the way it fits. So that's one way to check for sizes. There we go. Good to know. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, before we wrap things up, uh, where can folks find the two of you on the interwebs if they would like to do so? Uh, people can find me at uh, at Mitra Jordan on Twitter and MitraJordan.com is my website. And he be everywhere. <laughs> I, I, uh, I can be found <laughs> at all over the place, uh, all over the socials at the Dr. B. That's T-H-E-E-D-O-C-T-O-R-B as in boy. But you know, more importantly, go follow Take This. Uh, take this org uh, on all the socials. Got a lot of cool tidbits of advice and resources going out for Mental Health Month, which is this month. Uh, and yeah, just go check out some of the really awesome free resources. Stay up to date on what we're doing. Please go do that and check that out. Uh, but uh, that is going to do it uh, for this week's episode of Champions of Psychology. So until next week, take care of yourself. Bye. Bye. Champions of Psychology is meant as education and entertainment. It is not a substitute for medical advice or professional counseling. Discussion of mental health topics will be primarily rooted in research and the personal experiences and self-disclosures of the hosts. While we can provide generalized education and possible mental health resources, we cannot offer any recommendations, advice, or opinions for any specific persons, cases, or situations. We provide these resources and links at our sole discretion, but have not necessarily vetted or reviewed any resource. We assume no liability for the use of the information or resources on these sites, and we encourage you to use your own best judgment.